Hi everyone, this is Eagle News. I'm Ralph Cornell in Washington. It's Saturday, May 14, 2022 here in the nation's capital. Our coverage begins now. Our Eagle News team asked consumers across the country on how the historic inflation rates are impacting their households, their wallets, the food on their table. Here's how some of them are dealing. Inflation, interest rates gone up by half a point recently by the feds, is affecting the stock market right now, and it does affect some of the funds, if you will, because uh, most of our retirements is locked in these funds. But beyond that, I wouldn't worry too much. I buy less meat, eat less meat, walk more places. I try to shop more local. In the last few weeks, I saw the prices of vegetables, meat, and fish rose by 30%. For family of five, our grocery receipt comes to $250 every week. Last year alone, I can fill up our pantry for a week-long food budget of $150. Everyone can feel the pinch of the economic crunch. I would probably be you know, more careful with, with what I spend, and um, I'd probably be more, I'd probably be save, saving more as well. Really hard to budget my income. Emptied my wallet. Gas has gone through the roof. Food prices have tripled, and uh, yeah, my savings is now gone. So that's basically what how inflation has affected my wallet. Buying groceries, getting a car, getting gas for a car, or even owning a home makes it difficult for a working class citizen to make ends meet. Inflation has affected me financially the most through rent, which I know is not uncommon. Um, I've moved about six times the past five years and will most likely have to move again at the end of my current lease. How much it costs to fill my gas tank? Because all the food prices are going up higher. My paycheck is not going up any higher. Gas prices are outrageous now, just and I need that just to get back and forth to work. God, it's been a long journey. The gas, I already have to commute very long. Groceries for me, my baby, our family. Um, I feel like inflation has affected my finances to the point where I worry about looking where to get gas to see where I can get the cheapest prices because it's gotten so expensive and I work so far from home and it's a commute every single day with traffic and that already wastes so much gas. So it's just concerning because it affects my everyday life. Of course, I can second that as far as when it comes to me, I have a family of six and inflation definitely plays a big part in my finances um, as far as feeding the family, <laughs> keeping all of us fed, we love to eat and um, it's just getting very expensive. Day by day, they raise like few cents, dollar, few cents, dollar now. Everything. Nothing chicken here anymore. Most food, the, the price raise a lot, especially chicken, beef, and pork. Even like the pork, right? And uh, they raise like more than 30%. I can say average, how much? Well, I was saying more than 30%. And the vegetable in winter, higher than summer. Kulang na Kahit yung pansarili mo, hindi na uubre. Hindi mo na mabibili. O mabibili mo na lang siguro, yun talagang kailangan kailangan. Compare mo dun sa dati, na meron ka pang extra, minsan may natatabi ka pa, nagagamit, dun sa ibang mga pangangailangan mga bagay. A new report by the country's top health agency reveals that the United States reached a historic rate in firearm deaths in more than 25 years. What can be done to address this? Russell Ferreira tells us more. The U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, or CDC, says there has been an alarming 35% increase in the firearm homicide rate from 2019 to 2020. Firearm homicide has plagued the country, especially while the pandemic ran its course. This comes with widening disparities by race or ethnicity and poverty level. In a CDC Vital Signs report, it says that in 2020, the firearm homicide rate reached its highest level in over 25 years in 2020. Firearms were involved in 79% of all homicides and 53% of all suicides. Key findings for firearm homicides include rates increase for both males and females, but more notably among males. The highest rates and increase occurred among the non-Hispanic black persons. 
Rates increase across the country in large and small metro areas as well as non-metro and rural areas. And rates were higher and showed large increases in counties with higher poverty levels. Meanwhile, key findings for firearm suicide reveals that the overall rate remained nearly level between 2019 and 2020. Rates increased most notably among non-Hispanic American Indian, Alaska Native, males aged 10 to 44 years old. Overall, rates were highest at the highest poverty level and lowest at the lowest poverty level. And non-metro and rural areas experienced the highest rates. In the media briefing aimed to determine ways to reduce firearm deaths and related disparities, Dr. Deborah E. Howry of CDC says firearms deaths are preventable, not inevitable, and everyone has a role to play in prevention. The health agency strongly advocates health equity as a comprehensive approach to decrease firearms deaths. The CDC suggests some long-term solutions in healthcare and service providers, community partners, and local and state governments can work together on. This includes street outreach and hospital-based prevention programs, enhancing and maintaining green spaces, and strengthening economic and household stability. In 2020, there were more than 45,000 firearm-related deaths in the U.S. That's about 124 people dying from a firearm injury every single day. Firearm-related injuries were among the five leading causes of death for people ages 1 to 44 in the United States. Russell Feria, Eagle News, Washington, D.C. Thanks, Russell. A grim milestone in the U.S. as it reaches 1 million COVID deaths. Nurses unhappy with how the pandemic has taken a toll on their profession. Casualties of the war in Ukraine. Plus, graduating students from a college in Texas gets a very pleasant surprise. All this from Thomas Likeness on Correspondent at Large. And now news and commentary from around the globe. More than one million Americans have died of COVID-19 since the pandemic began more than two years ago. The country reached that milestone this past week. U.S. President Joe Biden told the second global summit on COVID-19 the pandemic isn't over yet. He says now is not the time to be complacent. So we have to invest now, now. We have to secure political commitments now. We have to start working to prevent the next variant and the next pandemic now. And that's, and you know, that, that, that's going to require all of us, all of us to do more. But while the politicians talk, many of those on the front lines gathered at the Washington Memorial in the U.S. Capitol. Nurse Kelsey Fitzpatrick says they're broken and beaten down, burnt out, just plain tired. And they're angry. Angry no one is listening to their concerns. She has this message for people whose hands are on the levers of power of the healthcare system. We're human beings. Our patients are human beings. You don't want your family member to be one of our eight patients that we're taking care of. You don't, you don't want to be that person. So it's just the, the ignorance and the dismissive attitude of anyone who has the power to change it, which is why we're all here today. There's also the frustration of the people who have gone down the anti-vax rabbit hole, those who believe that this is just a big hoax concocted to take away their freedoms. You would think one million deaths would convince them otherwise. The casualties of war. In Ukraine, innocent civilians randomly killed as the Russian invasion rages on. Military strategists downplay this. They use the term collateral damage. Doesn't sound as bad. You know, even more despicable than the random killings, schools have been targeted by the Russians. What you see here on the screen is a school that was bombed. At least 60 people died in that needless attack. And that was just one. Here's another. Three people died in that Russian strike. Omar Abdi, he's the head of UNICEF. He says 15 of the 89 schools supported by the organization in Eastern Ukraine have either been damaged or destroyed. These attacks must stop. 
All parts must honor their legal and moral obligation to protect civilians and civilian infrastructure, to respect international humanitarian and human rights law, and to ensure the rights of children are upheld. Other non-military targets include hospitals. President Volodymyr Zelensky says Russia has bombed 570 healthcare facilities since invading Ukraine on February 24th. The United Nations Human Rights Council has voted to hold an inquiry into Russia's abuses in Ukraine. Ukraine's UN ambassador, her name is Yevhenia Filipenko. She says Russia has to be held accountable for its atrocities. The irrefutable evidence of gross and systematic human rights violations, as well as war crimes and crimes against humanity committed in the course of the Russian aggression against Ukraine, are building up with every minute of this war. Innocent civilians, the victims of a dictator's ambitions. A good news story now. I want to tell you about the 2022 graduation at a college in Marshall, Texas. On commencement day at Wiley College, students got more than their diplomas. Now, Wiley College is a historically black college in Eastern Texas. This was the scene at graduation ceremonies when the college president, his name is Herman J. Felton Jr. He surprised everyone with this announcement. And you are debt free. You do not owe the college a penny. If you have a balance, you had a balance. You no longer have a balance. An anonymous benefactor stepped up and paid off tuition balances for more than 100 students. The amount of debt wiped out? About $300,000. Back in seven days, in the meantime, I wish you all peace, joy, and happiness in the ensuing week. Thomas I. Likeness, correspondent at large, Eagle News. Thanks, Thomas. The Department of Education has announced 2022's U.S. Presidential Scholars. 161 students from all 53 states and territories made the list and will be honored. Secretary of Education Miguel Cardona says the honorees represent the best of America and reminds us that when empowered by education, there are no limits to what our young people can achieve. The Presidential Scholars Class of 2022 will be recognized for their outstanding achievement this summer with an online recognition program. In other news, young robotics enthusiasts competing at this year's VEX World Championship share with Eagle News what makes the competition fulfilling. In Dallas, Nanita Manawis reports. Today we're here at the K. Bailey Hutchinson Convention Center in Dallas, Texas at the REC Foundation's Vex Robotics World Championship, the largest and the fastest growing robotics program in the world. It's a battle of the minds where young students compete and showcase their extraordinary talents and passion in technology. More than 20,000 students ranging from elementary to university age groups competed all throughout the year with their custom-built robots and out of that 3,000 has been able to qualify to come into the World Championships. So my name is Chase, I'm uh, the driver, the, uh, the builder and the programmer and we're um, actually a homeschool team from Salina, Texas. We're, um, we call it uh, EIT Academy and uh, my name is Landon. Uh, I'm the strategist and the somewhat driver. Uh, I also do the videography for our team. What our robot does is there are these goals in the field that are almost like little coat racks and you have to take those to your side of the field. Um, there are two different sides of the field, one for each alliance. Uh, there's also a seesaw on top of uh, each plot on, e on each side of the field that doubles the points of the goals on your side. So what our robot does is it has a clamp on the front of the robot, a pneumatic clamp that grabs onto the goals and then there's a one motor lift that can lift it and it can directly drop it on top of the platform. Um, it also has a sort of forklift um, lift on the back of the robot to store uh, sort of the mini uh, goals and then it has this conveyor that it scoops rings up and then drops them onto the branch inside of that goal and that just gives us a lot of points. You're able to hold the yellow goal in the front and then one of the smaller goals in the back and just really maximize our points that way. 
to be honest, I think the most exciting part of the competition is just being able to watch something that you made from scratch work. It's just so, it's just so fulfilling to watch it just like, you built it and it's yours and no one else has the same thing and you designed it and watching it do exactly what you wanted to do. It's just, that's the most exciting, that's just my favorite part of the competition. The VEX Robotics World Championship runs from May 3rd until May 12th. And for the 2022-2023 season, registration is now open. Anita Manawis, Eagle News, Dallas, Texas. Thanks, Nanita. Secretary Xavier Becerra, during a recent stop of the Health Department's national tour to strengthen mental health, underscores the importance of accessible services, especially for children with anxiety and depression. Frendel Freheren on this week's Health is Wealth. Health is wealth. When the mind begins to fail, what is compromised? Perspective and performance. In the recent years, it's undeniable that there's been an increase in the amount of youth being diagnosed with mental conditions, like anxiety and depression. May is Mental Health Awareness Month. The U.S. Department of Health and Human Services Secretary Xavier Becerra traveled here to the Pacific Northwest to present and discuss the Biden-Harris administration's effort to combat the nation's mental health crisis. HHS is making notable investments in its mental health and substance use prevention services. Secretary Becerra mentioned that HHS is awarding states and territories billions in new funding so that they can help more Americans in need. Secretary Becerra then announced that the goal is to get all Americans, especially our youth, the mental health services they need and full parity between physical and mental health care. Secretary Becerra met with two organizations that will be key HHS partners in achieving greater heights with the new program. In Oregon, Lines for Life, and in Washington, Crisis Connections. During his travels, he was joined by other Congresswomen and men, state and community leaders in both Oregon and Washington. Together in a roundtable setting, they collaborated ideas on how to successfully transition nationwide to the 988 National Suicide Prevention Lifeline in July. A common understanding, there's no growth without change. The true success of these investments is yet to unfold. Health is wealth, Frendel Faheran. Thanks, Frendel. In a related story, an ice cream parlor in Corpus Christi shows its support for mental health, one ice cream scoop at a time. Jane Kathleen Gregorio on Community Care. Our story today brings us to Corpus Christi, Texas, where a local ice cream shop is working together with a nonprofit organization in honor of National Mental Health Awareness Month. Uh, well, we are a rolled ice cream shop, so you will be able to get dinner in the show, if you will. Um, we will make the ice cream fresh right here in front of you. Um, it is a fun experience. You can choose to create your own flavors or we have some fun signature flavors. So being a small business locally here in the Corpus Christi area, we feel that it's important to rise up um, our community and to come together. Um, we feel that being here means being a part of our community. So that is helping local organizations and nonprofits like we are today. We are partnering with NAMI Greater Corpus Christi. It is Mental Health Awareness Month. So we felt like it was very important to shed light on this amazing organization. Um, especially the after effects of COVID. We really feel like organizations like these is going out and helping people in need. Um, so we wanted to help spread their word and spread the great work that they do. Um, NAMI is, we're one of about 28 affiliates throughout the state of Texas and we're chartered in the Coastal Bend area. May is considered Mental Health Awareness Month and we um, dedicate the entire month to spreading awareness of mental health conditions, spreading awareness of NAMI. It's been said that NAMI is the best kept secret in our community. Well, we don't want to be a secret anymore. We want people to know because we have these programs we offer and people in the community can come even if they can't afford to go to you know, some of the other stuff because we don't charge for anything. Polar Bear owners wanted to do something to highlight Mental Health Awareness Month and so you know, we got together and collaborated and so they created a specialty drink. It's green because green is the color for mental health awareness. 
and it's this delicious, refreshing cucumber mint lemonade. And they offer a promotion um, this evening from 5.30 to 8. Anyone who comes in and orders the ice cream can get a free specialty drink. They're also giving 20% of the proceeds from this evening to our organization as a donation, and so that's really cool. And if it wasn't for collaborations with places like this, you know, we might run out of funding, but we're really grateful that they are offering to do this for us. NAMI is funded by the help of other people, other businesses and programs to continue to search and reach out to the people that are in great need. So we go through things and we have issues, we have problems, disabilities, but they work us through it. And the funding through and to NAMI continues to help and reach out to so many more people. Thank you, Nam fam. Thank you for helping me understand that certain situations from when I was a kid to now were out of my control, but you guys helped me with the healing process and with my therapy and all the resources that I need. I feel like mental health is a really big struggle right now in society today and so many people are silent about it and we need to open up and end the silence about mental health and you know by you opening up you're gonna save that life you're gonna give one person hope. Okay what ice cream flavor did you order? So this is the Rocky Road so it's the marshmallows, the chocolate and the nuts. And what's your favorite ice cream? Rocky Road. <laughs> I'm Marissa Ortiz, United States of America's Miss Texas. You're watching Eagle News. Jane Kathleen Gregorio, Community Care, Eagle News, Corpus Christi, Texas. Thanks, Jane. It is National Nurses Week in Canada. Provinces, cities, communities, and their leaders celebrate these modern day heroes who, even without capes, make every patient's day easier. Here's Joshua Santiliana with the story. May 9th to 15th, is National Nursing Week in Canada. Ontario's nearly 184,000 nurses are being appreciated and thanked for the resilient efforts in caring for all Ontarians amidst the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic. Ontario nurses have been requesting change within the province's healthcare system for years now. Ontario Nurses Association continues to advocate for the repeal of Bill 124 as it has been the reason many nurses have left the profession. One ICU nurse takes to Twitter to state that no amount of appreciation will substitute equitable pay for nurses. Ontario's nurses have tirelessly worked longer hours at the front lines since the beginning of the pandemic, when COVID vaccines were yet to be developed. Now, Ontario nurses and all nurses across the country are aiming to clear the backlog of procedures that were put on hold since 2020. Ontario's next elections are coming closer, set to happen next month on June 2nd. Now, more and more nurses are voicing out their opinions regarding the repeal of Bill 124 and their political standing. Joshua Santaliana, Toronto, Ontario. Thanks, Joshua. In a related story, nurses in a local hospital in Blue Ridge, Texas, receive a lovely tribute from a church community there. Nanita Manawis reports. With or without the pandemic, nurses play a vital role in caring for the sick. And in honor of the National Nurses Month, volunteers from the Iglesia Ni Cristo Church of Christ in Blue Ridge, Texas, made this a special day to honor and appreciate nurses in their community. We have set up a day to appreciate the nurses in our area. We have done this as a continued event to appreciate and help those who serve our community. We have gathered goodies for our nurses to appreciate their services for their hard work and dedication in such a trying time when it comes to overcoming the pandemic. I'm Alexa, I'm a travel nurse here at Baylor Scott and White McKinney and I'm gonna be full-time in the PCU. Yes, so I was lucky enough to actually start nursing bef right before the pandemic. So going through the changes, I've actually found more willpower in nursing now because uh, you kind of see how important it is. Beforehand, you, I don't know, just felt more like a job. And now you see kind of how a lot of society really like is on our shoulders. Nurses are 
the Heroes Without Cape because they offer their time, effort, strength to help people without any reservations or any questions. To all the nurses out there, all around the world, as we celebrate this Nurses Appreciation Week, I, along with the rest of the people around the world, like to thank you for the many things you have done for millions and billions of people around the world through your hard work and sacrifices. A message that I wanted to share with the world, especially since of, with our experiences with the pandemic, is a big thing is to definitely take care of yourself, take care of your health, because as nurses, we see a lot here in the hospital and we obviously don't want you to be here. So as much as possible, you know, take care of yourself, your well-being, do those walks outside, get some fresh air and also, you know, look out for each other as well and share kindness and be kind to one another. Yes. Anita Manalis, Eagle News, McKinney, Texas. Thanks, Anita. And Happy Nurses Month to all nurses. Thank you all for joining us again. If there are stories or topics you want us to share with you, just comment below. View, like, share our other shows, City Limits with Ellen Basileahe, Connected with Dr. David, Take a Seat and Join Us with Anna Kui, Plate Date with Mike Hudson, and Friends, plus Journey, Stories of Filipinos in Canada with Kathleen Cruz. Follow us on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter at Eagle News Live. I'm Ralph Cornell. Happy weekend, everyone.